So today I want to show you a few techniques you can try with the new wave folder from Venom. Of course, many of these techniques can work also with other wave folders, also in hardware. And let's really start with the most obvious processing audio signals. So here I have a sequence with slips. This will sequence the VCO unit also from Venom. Right, this is already going through the wave folder. Right, so I can shape the sound. But um, both in this case, both the preamp and the stage amp will go down to silence. So if, for example, I take the stage amp all the way down, right, we get no signal. And now we can use this as a sort of a VCA with a wave folding. Right, so I have here an envelope that I will use to open the stage amp. Right, so already we get something a bit more interesting. But as with other folders, the amplitude of the incoming signal will also change the result. So if I change the preamp, right, the volume before it goes in, if I take it down, you can see it's being less and less folded. Right, so if we control the amplitude of the incoming signal, we can also change the results, right? So here I have walk um, from Bog Audio, which will output smooth random voltage. So if I send this to the preamp and open it just a bit, right, we get a bit more variation. Sometimes it will be more intense, sometimes less. I will just add some delay to this. Now we can also use this folder really nicely with the bass voice. Um, instead of having a complex signal going through a filter, we can use the folder to add variation in timbre. So here I have the Rhythm Explorer, again also from Venom. This is sequencing two VCO units. Right, I'm mixing them again into the wave folder, using it as a folder VCA or VCA folder. Right, so it produces really a nice uh, sound, a nice timbre to this uh, to this bass. I'm just using a sine wave and a triangle wave, and with the folder we get this uh, extra texture to the sound. The wave folder works also really nicely on drums. So here I have three plats. Each of them is a different um, drum voice. Right, and in this case, I'm using two wave folders um, in stereo. So one wave folder will go to the left channel, one will go to the right. So we have also stereo variation. So here, for example, I have a kick. Right, and some hi-hats. If you are with headphones, you can hear the stereo variation and you can also hear the texture the wave folders give to the sound. And of course, this wave folder is also polyphonic, so we can also use this with polyphonic voices. Here I have a chord again with the VCO unit. And I'm using two polyphonic LFOs to modulate the folder, so each voice, each channel of polyphony gets different, a different LFO. Something I really like about this wave folder is the fact that it works really nicely with audio rate modulation. All of its CV inputs have oversampling. If I right click the CV input, you can see we have oversampling on by default. Right on all the CV inputs, this means that we can experiment with audio rate modulation without getting weird digital artifacts. So here, as you can see on the scope, I have just a sine wave. Right, of course. I can fold it and change the sound, change the timbre, but again, I can also modulate the folding. And in this case, um, we will do this at audio rates. So I have here another VCO unit, it's tuned a bit down. 
Now we'll take this to the preamp for example, and again, if I right click the CV input, I can also make sure that it will accept a um, bipolar modulation, just like from a VCO. So I will turn this on. Right, and listen to this lovely sound. Right, we have audio rate and um, VCO modulating the preamp. Right, I have here another VCO unit tuned even lower, and I will do this, I will uh, use this to uh, modulate the bias. And I have here uh, another one that I will use to modulate the stage and again in the right click menu or if I right click the input I can change this also to bipolar modulation. Right, so already we get a really really nice sound with the help of audio rate modulation. I have this going through a uh, chorus. just to add some width to it. And I have here also a sequencer that is sequencing an envelope and that I will use to open a Lopez filter here. Right, just to have uh, some sort of uh, rhythmic variation. I have here also a kick drum again with plats and a nibel sequencer. And if you can see here, this drone that we created is going also through oppressor, which will help me use the kick to duck this bass, this drone. Just to give a bit more space to the kick drum. Right now, audio rate modulation can work also really well for adding accents, right? So here I have again uh, slips sequencing the VCO unit. Right, this is already going through the wave folder, but I have here another VCO unit that again I'm using to modulate the stage amp at audio rates, but this will happen only together with an envelope, right, an envelope will bring in this modulation and sorts of accents. Right, so I have here another uh, gate output that I can use from slips. Right, and this opens here the envelope that will add accents through audio rate modulation. And of course, we can also use this to create noise and then create some sorts of uh, hi-hats, for example. So here I have a VCO unit and another one modulating at audio rates. They are not tuned together, they are not doing anything harmonic, right? So we get basically noise and I'm using this for hi-hats. Another nice thing about this wave folder is that it's DC coupled, so it can also process modulation sources like LFOs, creating more complex wave shapes. Here I have a sine wave LFO and I can very easily start adding complexity to it, right, just by, just by folding it, right, and turning it from, an, uh, sine, from a sine wave LFO into something a bit more complex. And another thing, since we are not dealing with uh, audio uh, source, we can also turn off the oversampling. If I right click it, we can just turn it off to save a bit of CPU. Again, we are not processing audio, so there is no need for um, oversampling. And something that's always fun to do with LFOs is uh, to use them as pitch information. Right, so here again, I'm using just a sine wave from the LFO, as you can see. Right, and I'm quantizing it to a scale with the quantizer, the voice itself is the FM operator. Right, and you can hear that the pitch is moving according to the sine wave. Right, what I'm doing here, I'm sending the LFO to a sample and hold, and I'm using a clock to trigger the sample and hold. So basically we are sampling this LFO, quantizing it, and it's turning into a sequence. 
But now, of course, um, if we start shaping this sine wave, making it a bit more complex, also the sequence we will get will be more complex. So I can start folding this LFO. Right, and we start getting phrases. It's much more interesting than just a, a, a sine wave that goes up and down. Now, of course, this works great also for complex modulation. So here I have, again, a triangle LFO, as you can see here on the scope. And this is opening a filter. Right, you can hear the movement of the filter according to the triangle. Right, but again, we can turn this triangle into something a bit more complex, creating complex modulation. Right, so it's not just another triangle wave. And another thing we can do, just to create a bit more um, repetitiveness, if that's a word, and we can use the reset input of the LFO to reset it every now and then, for example, with a clock division of four, and then we get something a bit more repetitive. Right, we can do this even further. So we get something a bit more repetitive, but it's still very complex. And again, this wave folder, we can also use it as a VCA and bring modulation in and out. Right, so here again, I have an LFO. And in this case, it's uh, controlling a band pass filter. Right, but I'm using here another sequencer to bring this modulation in and out, again, through the wave folder, because we can also use this as a VCA. So sometimes, as you can see here on the scope, there is modulation, sometimes there is no modulation, according to this sequence. So we get a bit more variation, complex modulation sources, and we can also bring them in and out, thanks to the VCA of the folder. Now, just like we can process LFOs, we can also process envelopes for more complex results. Right, so here I have a normal ADSR envelope, and already just by sending it through the wave folder without doing anything, already you can see we get a more interesting results. We get two peaks, the ones, once when I hold it and another one when I release it. Right, but again, we can also process things, we can also fold things. Look at this shape of the envelope. This is not something you will get with any ADSR envelope, right? You can create really interesting shapes and use the envelopes for all sorts of different things. For example, here I have chords with a note sequencer from JW, right? And I'm using here an envelope going through the wave folder. You can see the interesting shape we get. Um, again, this is just a normal ADSR envelope, and we get something much more complex. So I'm using this to open the filter to bring in this voice. Right, you can hear the shape of the envelope. I will add some delay to this. Right, I have here also some drums just for fun, the gate sequencer, sequencing uh, two drum voices, just a uh, kick and a snare. Right, and again, the snare I'm processing a bit with a delay and a reverb. And here I have also a bass, right, again, the VCO unit going through some chorus. And also here I'm using an envelope, sending it through the wave folder. But in this case, I'm using random modulation to modulate the wave folder. So you can see we get all sorts of shapes here from the envelope. Again, just a normal ADSR envelope going through the wave folder with some modulation. And we get all sorts of different shapes that we can use to add movement and variation.
Another fun thing to try is feedback patching. Now the results will be different in hardware because in VCV there's a delay between the modules, but you might still get interesting results. Now another thing to keep in mind is to make sure your levels are not too high because feedback can get crazy pretty quickly. Now in this case, again, I have the VCO unit, it's going through a mixer, and then it's going to the wave folder, right? So if I bring it in, we just get a sine wave, a really low sine wave. Of course, I can start folding it. Right, but now I can feed the folder, the wave folder, back into itself through the mixer. Right, so I will send the wave folder, a copy of the wave folder of the output back to the mixer, and now I can start bringing it in. start getting all sorts of crazy sounds, but we can also make this a bit more complex by sending it first through a delay. In the case of the VCV delay, we have a wet output, so it's 100% wet. If you use a different delay, just make sure to set the delay to 100% wet. And also take the feedback all the way down, because we already create here a feedback loop. Right, so now we have also a bit of movement from the delay. listen to this nice sound. Right now we can also process this um, with different effects. So here for example, if I send this back to the mixer, right I have here a chorus, right and a filter that I can close a bit just to get rid of those high frequencies. Right, and then a nice long reverb. Right, listen to this drone again with the feedback loop, with sending the wave folder back into itself. We can also create interesting noise um, just with the wave folder. Right here I have the wave folder, it's going to the mixer. But now what I will do, I will send the output back to the input. You can see just like this, this works great also in hardware. And now by changing the parameters, we can get all sorts of different weird noises. Right, again, just sending the wave folder back into itself. I have here, again, slips that I will use to modulate here the bias. And also to sequence this uh, with an envelope. Right, maybe I can also sequence here the stage amp. Right, so we can get also interesting noise. Right, here I have also drums, again, just for fun. And that's it, I hope you enjoyed this video and you will go and explore these techniques. I have another sequence that I will bring in. Um, thank you for watching.